everybody. Thanks for coming. We're headed into our last month of warm up to topicals. I just want to quickly alert you to the program we have next Tuesday, Amy Devine talking about ideas for involving young people in stamp collecting. If you're not familiar with Amy, she is the author of our wonderful uh, t uh, topical tidbits section of our ATA website. Take a look there. She does beautiful features on many different topics. They're all free. You can download them. You can share them with a young person or actually a lot of adults really enjoy those, those wonderful programs that she does. So that's next Tuesday, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern with Amy Devine. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Charlene Blair. Charlene is the founder and executive director of the National Museum of African Americans on Stamps, a virtual and traveling museum. She is dedicated to encouraging the hobby of stamp collecting and career options in the museum industry. She is the Illinois State Director of ESPER, an organization that many of us belong to and that has a strong relationship with ATA, the Ebony Society of Philatelic Events and Reflections, and is an award-winning exhibitor. I met Charlene for the first time, I wanna say it was maybe 2013 at a Women Exhibitors Conference and she had one of her first exhibits there and it was beautiful and creative. And I thought, wow, this is a young woman who is really gonna go places in our hobby. And I was right. So it's my pleasure to introduce Charlene Blair. Thanks, Don. How's everybody doing? I mean, we had a chance to uh, connect before we started. And I just wanna thank you for the invitation to join you for this Black History Month. Happy Black History Month for everybody. And I am going to share my screen now, share the presentation as we are talking. Dawn mentioned that um, I'm also the founder of the National Museum of African Americans on Stamps. And I just wanna give you a little background on how basically I merged the hobby along with my passion for the museum industry. And so I know the purpose of this particular presentation is to give you an overview of African-Americans on uh, women on US stamps and other philatelic items that you, know, that you can add to your collection. But basically I started collecting in 91 uh, as a way to teach my son history and to leave a legacy. But it has turned into a happy place for me, you know, a place of therapy like meditation or journaling. And I remember back in 2012, I actually applied for a grant to start what I thought was going to be the Stamp Keeper Museum. Uh, but I was denied the grant and I was a little down. But then I said, you know what, I'm going to be sharing my stuff on Facebook. So I set up a page called Cultural Collectibles and started just sharing my collection. Uh, and then I also joined ESPER. I think I joined it a few years before 2012, but I went to the 25th anniversary for ESPER. And that's when I first met Ms. Hayes in, in Charlotte. And I was just so inspired by her. And you know, they gave me some fuel to come on back and keep collecting, uh, keep sharing my collection on Facebook. And then the museum opened up in DC uh, and I became a charter member and had an opportunity to visit there in the, that October. And then we had the Dorothy Height ceremony at Howard University. I got my program signed by John Lewis and I was just even more inspired, but still felt that need to merge the two, the stamp collecting and the museum uh, field. So when I came back, I just really just went hard on trying to figure out how to start a museum. So when I came back and found how the National Museum of African Americans on Music was also in the process of being formed, I looked at how their initials were on their website and I looked at the museums in DC and I said, I wonder if nmaas.org is available. 
and it was available. So I took that as another sign that I was on track to develop the museum. And so, as I said, meeting Ms. Hayes was huge to me. And so this presentation is going to be done in memory of Ms. Hayes and as well as uh, in memory of another person that I will show you uh, shortly. But as you know, Ms. Hayes is the founder of Esper and she uh, you know, it started it in 1988. She, re she was reti a retired college professor as well as, uh, you know, she was inspired by Jesse Owens herself, as she said that she uh, was at a stamp unveiling where Jesse Owens was signing autographs, and she was the only African American in line. And when she got up there, you know, he was asking, well, what can we do to get uh, more people inspired, more African Americans inspired to appreciate the um, treasures, basically, that are in our um, in our group, in our African American life, and so she, after he died, she took that as a challenge, uh, to, and that's how Esper was formed. That's my understanding. I know there are other Esper members on here who may have more information about that, but that's the short stick of what my understanding is. So I had the opportunity to meet her, like I said, and I was just so in awe. I had her sign my program at the 25th anniversary. Uh, and here I took a picture with her in, in Charlotte. And then the next time I saw her was at our 30th anniversary in Virginia. And we all had an opportunity to go to the Capitol. Uh, and like they said, the Capitol is like one of the biggest museums you could possibly go to. Uh, and so we took this picture. I think several Esper members, different people were taking pictures. But while we were at the Capitol, and I don't know if a lot of Esper members even know this, she threw, came, called me to her and then she threw something in my bag. She said, look at it later. It was just a, like tissue paper or something she threw in my bag. And I waited till I got back to the hotel and inside was this beautiful scarf right here. And as you can see, it had black heritage people on that whole scarf. And it's really one of my most treasured items. Here are a couple other people that had a chance to take pictures uh, with her, Miss Betty Lewis, and I think Betty's on the call today. Uh, in the background photo bombing is Karen. I don't know if you all have met Karen. She wears that blue jean jacket and has all those buttons, stamps, buttons on it, stamp pin it is. And so it's just a really nice treasure that she has. And then here's Yvonne Singley, uh, who also took a picture with Miss Hayes. Now, the other person that this is dedicated to is Bernice Fields. Now, Bernice was a, an attorney from Minneapolis, one of the founders of the Minnesota Black Women's Lawyers Network. She's a member of APS and an avid stamp collector. She wrote this article on Delta Sigma Theta members that are on stamps. And I don't know if you, there's an a organization called Divine Nine. That group is filled with fraternities and sororities, African-American fraternities and sororities. There are uh, five, four sororities and five fraternities. But so Bernice wrote this letter. I know it was on the Esper website, but it appeared in the American Philatelist magazine. There are only two other times, and one other time that I know where we were kind of featured on the front cover of this magazine. And this is one of those times. And as a result of this article, Yvonne Singley, who I showed you in the picture before that was with Ms. Hayes, um, decided to do a fundraiser for their sorority, Delta Sigma Theta, there in Springfield, Illinois, as a fundraiser and she, a scholarship luncheon. And she invited Bernice to come and speak. And Bernice talked about you know, African-American women that are on stamps. And then she invited me to do a pop-up exhibit. So I had two tables there and the table was filled with um, different philatelic items of African-American women on stamps, you know, souvenir pages, birthday covers, the stamps by themselves, just a variety of items. And I put them in frames so I make it look like a little mini museum. 
So this is the front of the program and it had all the women in, in this circle right here, in the square. So, and then I've used some resources here. So of course I have to get, I'm giving Delta Sigma Theta first credit because it was their idea in Springfield, Illinois, March of 2019. I used the ESPER guide, American Philatelic Society, the USPS publication and Clarence and Felix, who I call my mentors, uh, have been very helpful as I you know, test things out on them. And so, and then Felix scanned a couple things that he gave me to use in this. So if you see this little oval here, that means that's not in my personal collection, but from a, a scan. So most of you all on here, I'm sure know uh, when the first US stamp uh, was presented 1847. And I have to say this on other presentations that I do because other people aren't familiar with the whole stamp collecting world. Uh, and then that we came on the scene, African-Americans came on the scene, 1940. 1940, we see Booker T. Washington, the John uh, Audubon, the 13th Amendment, uh, then of George Washington Carver, and then you see um, in 48 and then 56, how they backtrack to uh, Booker T. Washington, his, his home. Uh, fact, uh, that 13th Amendment, uh, stamp right there in the middle. I don't know if you guys know or not, but that's a uh, picture of a stamp of the statue. The actual statue was in DC, uh, Boston, Massachusetts had a replica of that. And they actually just took that whole statue down. Um, so we still have it on the stamp. So you can't, it'll be there forever, even when the statues are down. So of course, at some point, someone had to say, we can't keep being scattered with the stamps, with African Americans on stamps. And so a lot of work was put into starting con some consistency. And so we have the Black Heritage Series started in 78, which I understand is the oldest uh, commemorative series that the post office has. Uh, and this time they started off with a woman, with Harriet Tubman, who you, most people here I'm sure are familiar with, or that name, um, being popular with the Underground Railroad. And to be honest, after she appeared in 78, there were six men on stamps before there was another woman, uh, before another woman appeared. But as you know, Harry Tubman was born into slavery. Um, Ms. Tubman escaped and sub subsequently made, you know, some 13 missions to rescue enslaved people, family, and friends using the network known as the Underground Railroad. Uh, her real name was Araminta Ross, known as Minty or Moses of her people. We know there's still a lot of controversy going on with her being on the $20 bill. Uh, last time I read, it was still, it was postponed. It was supposed to be but last year, but it was postponed to 2028. I just recently heard that there is some more um, legislation or thoughts of it being possibly uh, changed from 2028 to sooner. We shall see. So each of these slides, as, as I'm going through, you'll see four uh, women on the stamps. And then I'm just going to call out a few of them, maybe 10 to 15 of them during this particular presentation. So uh, as I said, this particular book, uh, Minty, you may be familiar with the name Jerry Pinkney. Pinkney designed the Harriet Tubman stamp, Martin Luther King stamp, Benjamin Banneker, Scott Joplin uh, stamps. And then he illustrated this particular book, which is on Harriet Tubman's life. And I actually got this book from Michael's craft store this February for Black History Month. I was really you know, glad to, to snag it. And of course, when I recognized the name Jerry Pinkney, I was like, where else? I've seen that name on something. And sure enough, it was on this card at the World Stamp Show in 2016 in New York, where he was there and he signed a lot of our cards, 522.16. And there is that book, Minty. And also here, then this, we Esper made this really nice cover where we're highlighting Mrs. Hayes. And then here are just uh, some maxi cards, not dragon cards. I know you're familiar with dragon cards and a lot of us order those from Lloyd 
DeVry. And I, I have several of those from him too, but I was on the call, I think with uh, Graham, Graham Beck, and he mentioned something about maxi cars. And so I did a little research and found that um, Mystic Stamp had some of those. So I or ordered actually some of these to go with this presentation. And when you're talking about Sojourner Truth, the one person that I know of, one only woman, that has the Range Rover, or not what I'm calling the Range Rover, Mars Rover, named after her. And as you know, Sojourner, her real name was Isabella Bomfrey, uh, was very involved with the evangelical movements of the 1800s. She traveled throughout the Northern states, preaching and speaking out against slavery. Uh, President Abraham Lincoln appointed Sojourner to the National Freedmen's Relief Association, that's 1868, where she advised former slaves as they started their new lives as free men and women. Next group, and these are in order of when they came out. Of course, not, you know, but not by the, their times that they were born. But so in this case, Ma Rainey, billed as the mother of blues, Miss Rainey was one of the earliest black professional blues singers and one of the first generation of blues singers to record. Now her real name was Gertrude Pridget and she was married to William Paul Rainey in 1904. And she was, uh, she influenced Bessie Smith and Louis Armstrong. And there's Ma Rainey at the bottom right-hand corner. And I don't know if you all had a chance to see the movie, but there's a movie out called Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. And Viola Davis played in that role. And Chadwick Boseman was the last person, that was the last movie that he was in. And the movie, if you're not familiar with, uh, was based on a play too that August Wilson did. And August Wilson just recently he, you know, you may know him from doing Fences to play Fences, but his, he's the most recent Black Heritage stamp to come out. And this, um, I've been collecting 30 some years and this is my first time ever getting that card. Like when they had a brand new pack of stamps to open up. So uh, that was a nice treat. Now here we have Ethel Waters. Ms. Waters began her career in the 1920s singing the blues. She was the first African-American to star in her own television show and the first African-American woman to be nominated for a primetime Emmy. Billie Holiday. And today, actually, uh, <laughs> earlier today, I was a guest on the Wendy Williams show uh, in the virtual audience and guess who was the guest today? <laughs> Andra Day, she was the person that was the guest. So we got to see her perform and they talked about this very movie that's coming out this Friday on Hulu. And Billie Holiday uh, you know, was a jazz singer who greatly influenced the course of American music. You may know her from God Bless the Child that's got his own. And then the very controversial song, Strange Fruit. And this movie basically is uh, is talking about that and based on that and what she went through um, to even sing that song. You know, when you think about today, uh, the lyrics and things that are that may incite people or get people excited today. But she paid the price, and that song is still out there, still powerful at this point. And I actually ordered these two pieces recently too, knowing that the movie was coming out. I was like, oh, I don't have a lot of you know. Billy Holiday thing, so I ordered those pieces. Next set of four, uh, Bessie Smith, nicknamed the Empress of the Blues, was the most powerful female blues singer of the 1920s and 1930s and was a major influence on the fellow blues and jazz vocalists. And we were talking about before how, um, I think Ethel Waters was saying how she influenced her. And Madam C.J. Walker, I'm just going to that one, known as an entrepreneur, philanthropist, and political and social activist, Ms. Walker was considered the wealthiest Black self-made businesswoman at the time of her death in 1919. Now, a lot of times people will say that she was the first uh, millionaire, I think, uh, African-American woman, 
And a lot of people here in St. Louis still have uh, some controversy about that because we have Annie Malone here and she was a protege of uh, Madam C.J. Walker. So there's still a little animosity, a little something going on between the two of them when you look at their history, but they were together. The Annie Malone home is big here and they have a big Annie Malone parade every year. But this Betsy Coleman, so just tracking back to her, uh, this is a program, ceremony program and th those items at the bottom, the bottom right, the post office puts those out. So I have a friend who, when they came out dealing with African-Americans, she knows that I collect, so she would give them to me. But, you know, since it was difficult in the 1920s for any woman to learn how to fly, Miss Coleman traveled to France, where she was the first woman to earn her international aeronautics license. Coleman became known as Queen Bess. Performing as a stunt flyer and becoming a celebrity, she received full honors by the African-American 8th Infantry Regiment of the Illinois National Guard at her burial. It's another pick item. I love these souvenir uh, pages or the commemorative pages that the post office puts out now. This is one of the older ones. Um, the next set of four, Mahalia Jackson, Roberta Martin, Sister Rosetta, Clara Bard, Ward, uh, last name Stark, Sister Rosetta, but that's what she goes by, and songwriter, guitarist, recording artist. Uh, she was the first gospel music star to appeal to a diverse audience. And what you see in this picture here is actually a CD, gospel CD of their music. And I have not even opened it. It's still in the clear plastic and that's funny, but I'm just not opening it. And I have not been able to find it anywhere else. Usually if I can find two of something, I might open up the package, but in this case, I have not. So I've just kept it as is. And I put it on display of when I do the pop-up exhibits too. Laura Neal Hurston. Well, we got Patricia Harris, who was on the front cover of that magazine, uh, the, the American Philatelist that I showed you, Ethel Payne, uh, Zora Neale Hurston, and Wilma Rudolph. So Ms. Hurston was part, a part of the Harlem Renaissance. And you know now we have those Voices of Harlem Renaissance stamps that came out last year. But she was part of this too. Ms. Hurston was a prolific writer of short stories, plays, and essays. Her most popular novel was Their Eyes Were Watching God. So I'm just checking off things as I go through. Marian Anderson and Hattie McDaniel. So of course, I'm uh, somewhat known for the uh, Marian Anderson exhibit. Uh, Ms. Anderson was one of the most celebrated singers of the 20th century. She most recently, well, when she did, performed in concerts and recitals in major music venues and with famous orchestras throughout the world. Um, so, and then Ms. Hattie McDaniel, best known for her role in Mammy, as Mammy in Gone with the Wind. And Ms. McDaniel won an Academy Award for the Best Supporting Actress, the first uh, given to an African-American entertainer. And so uh, here is, or when I started the Marion Anderson exhibit that I actually won the bronze ribbon for in St. Louis and at the APS show, this first day cover that you see here, which is still one of my most favorite covers, was pretty much the inspiration for that. And the cover below was by Kendall Bevel. And then from what a little research that I found that this was made for the UPS, for their employees at Central Illinois Performance Cluster. I don't know if anybody has any other information about that, about the uh, employees being able getting special uh, gifts when new stamps come out. Maybe that's the case. And then this, here's this commemorative uh, stamp panel of a ceremony program. Thanks, you see I got the little logo here showing that that's a scan. Now, I'm not going into the Marion Anderson, but I would like to spend a little time on Hattie McDaniel. Now, when I said earlier that the 
this presentation started off because Bernice Fields did a um, article on Delta Sigma Theta sorority members that are on stamps. And so Hattie McDaniel is a member of Sigma Gamma Rho sorority, the sorority, and I am a member of that sorority. And she, we have an, an initiative, breast cancer initiative named after her. And so when I, like three years in a row, when the sorority hosts a fundraiser or an informational about breast cancer in the African-American community, we have a speaker and then I usually set up a display. So as you can see, I have a variety of items on here, souvenir pages, maxi cards or dragon cards. Um, that folder right there in the middle, apparently that's from press packages that the post office used to put together. I understand they used to do nice folders and put a lot of information in them. So I saved, I actually saved some of those that I did, uh, that I have in my possession now. But Hattie McDaniel um, was the, the youngest of 13 children. And she was from a family of performers. You know, as you all know, she was an actress. And from what I'm understanding, she was not able, even though she won the award, she was not able to sit up front to with the other people to get her award and sat a fool. Some reports I heard saying that she couldn't go at all. Other reports I heard said that she was able to be at the award show, but had to sit in the back and to the side. But as we know, we've gone down in history, gone with the wind. Her story is still told they can't take away the fact that she did win the award. But during World War II, uh, II McDaniel helped entertain American troops, but found that the film offers to be drying up. So in 1947, she started doing radio, taking over you know, the starting role in CBS radio's The Beulah Show, kind of before my time. The 19, in 1951, McDaniel started filming for television. Uh, the Beulah show and unexpectedly she suffered a heart attack around the same time and was forced to abandon her career uh, upon being diagnosed with cancer and she actually died from breast cancer uh, in 1952 at the age of 57. So that's why our sorority named our uh, initiative the Hattie McDaniel Cancer Awareness um, and Health Program. Next group, next group, uh, Mary Church Terrell. Um, and then I got, so this one I'm highlighting Fannie Lou Hamer. Oh, I listened to her video the other day of the testimony that she did and how they did not really want that testimony to go forth, but it did. And I don't know if you've had a chance to listen to it, but it is very moving and very, um, you know, telling of the times that, that that were happening. So a voting and women's rights activist, community organizer, and a leader in the civil rights movement, Ms. Hamer was the co-founder and vice chair of the Freedom Democratic Party, which she, you know, presented, represented at the national convention. Definitely would recommend going to listen to her video. Next four, Anna Julia Cooper, Celia Cruz, Barbara Jordan, Gwendolyn Brooks. Ms. Brooks down at the bottom right, a poet, author, and teacher. Ms. Brooks works often dealt with personal celebrations and struggles of ordinary people in her, her community. She won the Pulitzer Prize for Poetry in 1950 for Annie Allen, making her the first Black to receive the Pulitzer Award. And she's actually like from this area, from Illinois, I saw something where she was involved here very heavily. And Catherine Dunham, we actually in Illinois here, about 20 minutes from where I'm at in East St. Louis, Illinois, is the Catherine Dunham home that has been turned into a museum. But even I, growing up as a young girl, we all were exposed to the Catherine Dunham technique that was like your rite of passage. We would go to her center, to the center there, learn how to do the African dances and moves and wear our leotards and, you know, and everything like that. And so unless you've been through the Catherine Dunham technique, we would not give you any credit, you know. 
but uh, the center is still open. They're, they're trying to maintain it just like all other museums to stay uh, on board. Uh, as I was saying, talking earlier to yesterday and today is Museum Advocacy Day. And so I've been in uh, uh, meetings yesterday and today on that. And there's so many museums that are closing down, so many centers that are closing down. Uh, even Wells Fargo, I worked there during the day and we had 12 museums and they're closing 11 of, 11 of them this year. And they're only keeping the one in San Francisco. So all of those people are looking. So I'm, I'm like, if the big companies can't maintain their museums, you know, the smaller ones are having issues too. And so in my case, since I'm, um, you know, I don't have a brick and mortar, I'm, I'm a pop-up traveling museum. I've been not having to deal with having to pay rent and utilities like that. But even I have not been able to go to the library schools and conferences like I normally do and set up the tables to show the display. But here, Catherine Dunham, as we know, called the matriarch and queen mother of black dance. Miss Dunham was a dancer, choreographer, author, educator, anthologist, and social activist. Dunham had one of the most successful dance careers in black and European theater of the 20th century. Highlighting Edna Lewis, Sarah Vaughn, and Dorothy Hyde. As you can see, Miss Edna Lewis, uh, was a renowned chef, teacher, author. Ms. Lewis helped refine the American view of Southern cooking. Um, and Sarah Vaughn, uh, nicknamed Sassy and the Divine One, Ms. Vaughn won four Grammy Awards, including the Lifetime Achievement Award as an activist. And then at the bottom right is Ms. Dorothy Height. Let me go back here real quick. Yeah, and so I mentioned earlier that that was one of my first, um, well, one of my most fun stamp unveiling to go to at Howard University and then having the opportunity to go to the museum in DC again. And Ms. Height was the 40th stamp in the Black Heritage Series. And we know she was an activist that fought for the rights of women. She was the leader of the National Council of Negro Women she shared the stage with Martin Luther King when he gave his I Have a Dream speech. And you know, some people say that she, could, uh, she couldn't speak because she was a woman. But then I've heard that she actually gave her spot up so that the young John Lewis could speak so that they could have some representation from young people. That sounds more like it to me. Because you have Mahalia Jackson on there singing egging on, you know, and supporting and telling Martin Luther King to say his speech. So I don't think that they would deny, deny Dorothy Hyde from speaking. So um, I'm really just excited about her and I'm working on some uh, a special presentation for her as well. Now, as you see up here, the Maya Angelou stamp that was put out, that's the design that was put out. So as I went forward, this USA Philatelic, I started kind of following these and everyone that's pertaining to, you know, of course, African-Americans on stamps, I would keep it. So this one is from 2015 and I thought it was so pretty. And uh, so that's the stamp that I was expecting to see. And then when I opened up the magazine, this is the stamp that we got. So, hey, that still works. And then there's some controversy about that quote on that stamp that that's not really a quote from her, that it was inspired or from somebody else. That's not really a Maya Angelou quote. So that stamp is even, even more controversial, but isn't this a pretty cover? So I don't know, I, I've, I've been keeping the, uh, I have a Rosa Parks, really all the ones that come out that are pertaining to African-Americans. So someday I guess I'll do a slide show on just those catalogs. And then of course, here are some other pieces that we that we include when I do the pop-up exhibits so that people can see more than just stamps. So this one right here is Ms. Doris Gold. I know a lot of you all are familiar with her from 2013. I think that was one of the first ones I got that was you know, a special design. It may have been the most expensive one that I bought at the time. Here is at the stamp unveiling in DC at Howard University. Of course, I was so excited. You see, I took a picture of everything entering in the building. 
first the Esper came out with the Reflections magazine that had her on the front cover, which of course we know Don Neal is the editor for that and does an excellent job. I'm sure it was on the website. And then uh, this might be the next to the last slide. Lena Horn, Gwen Eiffel, Nella Larson, and Ann Spencer. And the last two are part of that Voices of Harlem Renaissance that I mentioned. And then we have Lena Horn here. Uh, of course, everybody knows singer, dancer, actress, and civil rights activist. Ms. Horn's career spanned over 70 years, appearing in film, television, and theater. This is one of my favorite uh, dragon cards. I think that's so pretty. I just like the color. And so then I gave myself a shout out when we said people on stamps. <laughs> so this was the exhibit. Uh, this is the Marion Anderson exhibit. Charlene, you're muted. Okay, the mute, the host muted everybody. <laughs> okay. So uh, Don, I think, I don't know if we met in 2008 or 2013, Don, but I think it was in St. Louis. Uh, yeah. That's the first time I did the Black Heritage Stamps and one, one frame exhibit. I think that's the first time I met Liz and she gave me some constructive criticism. No, constructive items that I could use to improve my exhibiting. Uh, and then I did the 2013 African Americans in Music and on Stamps, and then the Marian Anderson in 2017. And I got some um, suggestions on that one too in St. Louis, but I actually submitted the exact thing at the APS show. I didn't make any changes, but it was funny because it was a couple of judges that were there and the one guy remembered it. He was like, well, did you do this? Did you do that? And I was like, no, I just wanted to see maybe there you know, would be a difference in regions or the way different judges looked at it. So I still end up getting the bronze ribbon. And this is the picture that below, this is myself, then Mark Thompson got an award, Cheryl Gans and Dawn. And this is uh, was posted on the Esper website. I think I've copied it so many times, so it's kind of blurry. But I put this on because this picture almost didn't happen uh, with me here because I think we had a meeting, Esper had a meeting around the same time as the awards. And, I said, well, I got to leave and run around there and get this award. And the gentleman asked me, well, do you still want a picture? And I said, well, yeah, I think so. Because, you know, I had a feeling that, you know, I was probably making some kind of history here. I didn't know if there are any other African-American women who have won uh, bronze ribbons or any ribbons in the APS shows or even in St. Louis. So if not, I decided, well, you know what, just do a shout out for myself. And if you guys know of somebody, another African-American woman that has participated in these shows that has won any awards. I'd like to meet her, you know, maybe start a little group. And of course, the National Museum of African-Americans and Stamps appreciates any donations. Uh, can be mailed in, we have Cash App, we have PayPal. Again, I'd like to thank the American uh, Topical As Association for inviting us to present or inviting me to present. And I think that